Greetings, monarch raisers, planters of the milkweed, pollinator enthusiasts, and anybody else who has dropped by to say hello. This is the first time ever we've had a Raising Monarchs Behind the Scenes episode, so welcome. What exactly is a Behind the Scenes episode? What does that mean? Well, in the Raising Monarchs series, what I've tried to do is have each episode be something topic-centered, where it's either about a procedure, a, a tip, a trick, or some useful information. I try to make informative videos. It's never really been a series about my personal journey with monarchs. It's always been focused on the monarchs and the milkweed. But at the same time, if you've watched a lot of these episodes, you may notice that this one looks a bit different. He looks different. Where he's at looks different. And also, it has been a bit of time since a Raising Monarchs episode has occurred. So some out there could be asking, what's going on? Is this the same series? So while my goal of this series is to always give you useful information, I don't want to waste your time, Still, it did seem to make sense that because I have relocated, some people might want an update about that. Thus, behind the scenes. And what behind the scenes then means is here's some extra stuff about the Raising Monarchs series and addresses some things that maybe aren't necessarily topic-focused on the Monarchs or the Milkweed, for those who want it. As you can likely discern from the title of the video, my wife and I, we've relocated. Previously, we were living in the Lansing area, and now we've moved to Metro Detroit, really the upper limits of it in the city of Pontiac. Why the move? Well, I'm not exactly sure how your pandemic has gone, but uh, it threw me some curveballs. We'll leave it at that. We made the move in the fall of 2021, and by that time moving into the house, we could see that there was no milkweed in the yard. As far as having any home plants for milkweed leaves, for food for caterpillars, I'd be starting from scratch. And so the first spring season I actually had here was 2022, and definitely some seeds went into the ground. Or I should really say some germinated seeds that had sprouted went into the ground. Here, let me show you. Here's a little area I kind of made a perimeter to somewhat try and protect from uh, our two dogs that we have. How well that worked, um, it didn't really keep them out, but we do have milkweed growing here. So here's, you can see them, my four milkweed plants that have come back up from last year. One, two, three, four. And these four were grown from seeds from the milkweed that I had at the previous house. So the genealogy is, uh, has, has come along with us. See, before I could really get back into raising monarchs, and I'm not just talking about doing the series, but the actual raising of monarch butterflies, I had to take my own advice. You've got to make sure that you've got enough food for them. You can only raise as many monarchs as you can raise in quality, with quality habitat, quality food. So when I didn't have any milkweed in this yard, the year that we actually moved in, 2021, I raised two monarchs. Not a lot, but you know, meant a lot to those two for sure. Uh, I didn't want to take on any others because we were in the process of moving and I, I didn't want to be taking in any eggs that I couldn't for sure be able to, to do the right thing for. If I can't guarantee that I can raise them quality level with some assurance, you know, some confidence, then I shouldn't take them on. So once I got into this house with no milkweed, I knew that I would want to do what I had done before, establish a home amount of milkweed leaves that I could use for food if need be. To be honest, you know, when I um, am really having my home milkweed plants, the goal for them is really to just be the seed producers and they can give me a, a leaf or two and a pinch if I need it for some food. But without any source of that in the yard, I only raised the two that I did. So kind of, you know, myself, starting from scratch, taking my own advice, I had to get my own milkweed planted. That way I've got a home source that I can use. In Pontiac and in a lot of Metro Detroit, being a more urban environment, there's just less places for the milkweed to grow. And so finding like that random milkweed growing at a gas station. Not saying it can't be done here or can't be found, but you gotta look harder. Now, while these were planted last year, keep in mind, they were little tiny sprouts. I didn't get to use these for any milkweed food. But I was able to find some urban sources of milkweed that helped me out and allowed me to raise about 11 monarchs last year. Yep, yeah, it was 11. Let's check that out. I'll show you the lucky find source of milkweed. That I was able to use. New to an area, not only did I want to find milkweed, I was also looking for some skateboarding spots, skate spots. And imagine my surprise, my enjoyment, 
and I was checking out some back alleys here in the downtown, and I came across a large amount of milkweed. Growing in between these rocks, growing at you know, a, a public area that's set out, I don't know that anybody intentionally planted them here, but either case, it's definitely showed me, all right, we've got a food source located. Uh, it doesn't look like they mow <laughs> this, it's not a lawn. So I was pretty confident that um, this could be a place where I could get some food if I needed it. So last year, once finding a food source was secure, uh, also this was a place where I didn't know if I would find eggs or not, and pretty quickly I realized I could. You know, in a more urban setting where it's as sparse as it is, I wasn't really sure where to look for it. It's definitely, definitely reduced. But that also made me wonder then, you know, how prevalent would monarchs really be in Metro Detroit, in city areas? You know, I look around, there's plenty of buildings, parking lots, and even where there are weeds growing, not much milkweed. I didn't know that monarchs would really be around or would they just be passing over? So this was really like, upon finding it, my first batch of like adult milkweed that I could see. It's been here for a while as far as the root system. and get to see like, what does the adult urban milkweed plant life look like? A lot of what I'm finding when I do find urban milkweed, which again isn't that often, but it tends to have some pest damage happening. A lot of aphids in the more populated urban area. Many other pests too. I'm not sure if, um, you know, this is some speculation, but perhaps in a more dense urban environment with just a higher population of people, we have more variety of plants and yards, more gardening, and a chance then for more variety of pests rather than in just a natural environment where the pests kind of overlap, where people have encroached. I think, in other words, from the activity of humans, more pests might be brought into an urban environment. As long as they can find the plants, they can thrive too. So in my ventures in Pontiac downtown, I'd be checking these plants often and, and not really sure were there going to be urban monarchs laying eggs on them or not. With the lack of milkweed that I was just seeing in general, would monarchs themselves be just kind of passing over and staying on the outskirts of Metro Detroit? Would they be meandering into the neighborhoods or not? And, you know, I can certainly pull from the audience, but just my own experience with it, I wasn't sure. I was, I was looking each day. Eventually did start to find eggs. It wasn't plentiful, but it was 11 over the course of the summer. And I had the food for it right here, ready to go. But that then does send the message to me that, you know, while the milkweed might not be here, the monarchs are. And if they have the milkweed options, they are going to find it, they are going to lay the eggs on it. It's encouraging, because while I don't see a lot of milkweed in this area, that doesn't mean that there couldn't be. It's just going to take some, some work, some motivation, definitely some communication and promotion of it. I'm up for the challenge. See, we're out here to film a Raising Monarchs behind the scenes, and like behind the scenes of behind the scenes, just out here filming. You know, we've got, we've got an egg right there. So, urban setting or not, the monarchs are here, and they are looking for milkweed to lay their eggs on. Okay, so I'm going to check for a few more eggs, trying to beat a storm here. The weather doesn't always cooperate with filming. Back to the uh, home base milkweed here. We've got a plant that's also showing plenty of evidence that the monarchs are here. It was actually a day um, I was sitting out, and I saw... A female, well, it had to have been a female based upon the eggs that were laid, but I, I saw a monarch that was fluttering out of my yard and I checked the milkweed that had just sprouted up and there were eight eggs on it and then I think it was it, it could, I don't know if it was the same one or not, but the next day there was five more eggs waiting for me. Um, and we've got right here, actually a surprise caterpillar that I had not noticed. Cute little lad. So, I do kind of worry, you know, what, what are the urban monarchs that are in this area doing? A lot of the milkweed that they could be planting on, it does get mowed down. And there's just less to find. This guy wouldn't be here if I hadn't planted the milkweed last spring. He might be somewhere else, but again, it wouldn't have this option. There's just a lot less options for them here in the urban area, but they are here looking for those options. Because of the aphids, which are attracting the carpenter ants, I'll be uh, removing this leaf today. Taking this guy in. Let's go, bud. 
So there's a quick catch up as to what's been happening last few years and then also an update as to why moving forward things are going to look a little bit different. I'm still around, I'm still raising monarchs, I'm still doing my thing. Uh, not with a screened in porch any longer, but I'll manage. You have, right? New Raising Monarch episodes are planned, some are even already being filmed for this season. But just as before, I don't have a schedule that I follow as far as when they're posted. I want to post you an episode when there's a topic worth discussing, not just posting to post. Know what I mean? Don't want to waste your time. And with that in mind, getting back into this new swing of things, well, this is kind of a great time to where if you have a suggestion for a topic, something that you think an episode should cover and flesh out, now would be the time to leave it in the comments section. I can't make any promises, of course, but I'm always interested to hear from the Raising Monarchs community. Where are your struggles at? What questions do you have? What things are you trying to figure out and overcome? And it's possible you might have a topic that, yep, an episode should address. I'm Rich Lund. Thank you for checking out this behind-the-scenes episode, and thank you very much for your efforts to help out this very important pollinator. I'll see you next time.